All right, this is the videotape of the Black Cauldron, the first time that the Black Cauldron has ever seen the light of home video. <coughs> Sorry. Video came out in, I want to say, the spring or the summer of 1998. Uh, it's got this little Master Blast or whatever promo. I'll show that in a minute. Let's get to the tape. Um, yeah, but the Black Cauldron went the longest time in the home video era of the Disney films to go without being released a home video. 1985 is when it first came out. This is a June 29th or 20th, June 28th, 1998. Um, the Black Cauldron was originally, as I said in the Little Mermaid Walt Disney Classics video, was supposed to be on home video in uh, 1990, but because Little Mermaid was such a hit, they decided to skip that. And it came with this, it's instead of Master Blast, it's Disney's Blast Online and Disney Interactive. You get loads of CD-ROM fun. It's a weirdly shaped promo, but you've got Disney Blast Online, which I guess lets you play video games. Plus fully playable sections from the critically acclaimed learning series, which I don't think I owned. I think the only couple of Disney games I own for my computer. I had this Timon and Pumbaa game. Uh, I had the Aladdin Activity Center, and I had the Hercules Action Game. But that that the thrift store I go to, you find a lot of them. Like I found a Tarzan Activity Center, things like that. Here are learning series ones. You have Ready for Math with Pooh, Ready to Read with Pooh, Adventures in Typing with Timon and Pumbaa. Reading Quest with Aladdin and the Math Quest with Aladdin. Ugh. See if there's anything on the back before I go on my Black Cauldron rant. Um, well, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's probably just like a little promo thing. But the Black Cauldron is a... Hmm. It's an interesting film. If you don't read the uh, original book by... Uh, Lloyd Alexander, I think you'll like the movie alright, it's it's okay. If you do read it, don't expect much because this movie is does not follow the book very much at all. It's a fairly weak film. Not a lot of good characters. It's good good animation though. I mean it's a bit choppy in some spots, but it's it, it it's got it's got certain something to it. But Outside of that, there's really not nothing that good about the Black Cauldron, so that it warrants a a viewing from a traditional Disney audience. But it got released, so I guess a couple people were happy. Following in the tradition of Sleeping Beauty, which had waited 11 years before coming back to home video, and recently Aladdin, which has gone 11 years twice so far to getting a re-release on video. Lady and the Tramp came out in the fall of 1998. <coughs> Sorry. Again, I'm sick still. Fully restored with the THX. And it was the one of the two big holiday releases on home video, along with uh, The Lion King 2, which it's got a big trailer for. It's got some ancillary stuff. I'll show that first so we can just get to the tape and get on with it first it came with this little coupon for ragu which actually fits because of, of course the famous spaghetti scene here's how to receive your five dollar rebate um or not kids ride for free at amtrak that doesn't really make sense but who the hell am i to complain and you had this promo for the various Walt Disney Masterpiece collection tapes that were out there. Like Little Mermaid, the newer Mary Poppins, which I hope to get. Um, Sword in the Stone, Peach Dragon, among others. Anything on the back? Not much. And then you have this little 
checkbook, a little check, pay, check mark page, where you can say these videotapes are always available or not always available. Check if to see if you have all these videotapes. Um, you have it goes. I think it goes all the way. It goes all the way down to Mulan, where it says Mulan's in theaters now. Hercules only available for a limited time. Jesus, <coughs> oh, I hate being sick. Uh, lots of other films, but they're saying if it's currently not available, that means the video has not been released yet. Uh, no longer available means the film's away in the vault and it's likely not coming back for a while. Little Mermaid and Black Cauldron, of course, on there. All right, let's get into this tape. <sighs> Finally, an ink label tape. I was beginning to worry. Uh, this one came out August 1998. It's a bit, it's a bit slanted. The the cover, if you can, well, the ink label, if you notice. Lady and the Tramp is. I've said that on the uh, record. It's a, it's a good film. It it, it tries, in many aspects, but. It, it's not one of the elite films. It's a pretty good film. Good songs. Good characters. Overall, it's a pretty good film. In the February of 1999, Mulan got its first home video release following it, a fairly successful run in theaters. That was what most films of the Renaissance did at this point. None of them were really big record breakers like uh, The Lion King had been. Hopefully this doesn't have any ancillary stuff. It does not. Molto bene. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just getting really tired. As you can probably tell by my voice. Mulan came out in December 18th, 1998. Well, that's when the print date was. A lot of people know how I feel about Mulan. I think it's a... I think it's... One second. Ugh. I think it is... The weakest film of the Disney Renaissance. I really don't think it adds much outside of uh, maybe a couple of good characters like Mulan. Uh, I don't really, I really don't like Eddie Murphy as Mushu. The songs are really forgettable, with the exception of a few. And yet, surprisingly, as I'm doing my uh, countdown, or not my countdown, my contest of which animated Renaissance film is the best, Mulan's actually stayed pretty close to the marker with some of the other films, like in the middle of the pack. But it's fairly weak. I don't like the villain. I don't like the songs. The animation's still pretty damn good, because it's Disney. What do you expect? Um, but other, outside of that, there really isn't much to say about it. It's a fairly weak film. Disappointing, too. All right, here we go. Here's a good one. 101 Dalmatians. Released in March of 1999, and only available for 101 days, which really I don't think makes uh, a whole lot of sense. I would think uh, they'd want to keep it out for the whole year, but 1999 was a pretty hectic year for uh, Walt Disney Home Video. He had... Uh, Fox and the Hound come out, you had uh, Pinocchio come out, it was a pretty crazy year. February 6th, 1999, um, and it has a funny uh, a funny Mickey Mouse Works cartoon with Pluto getting the paper, but overall most people know 101 Dalmatians, it's a, it's a pretty good film. I do really like the film, I think it's... One of Disney's finest, even though it doesn't have the uh, artistic power to back it up, like say something like Sleeping Beauty had, or like one of the Renaissance films. But it uh, it can hold its own. It's got a couple. It's got some pretty funny villains. Songs are okay. One would think that I'd find this is a weak film, but I've been around this movie since I was a little kid. So yeah, Hundred One Dalmatians is pretty. Pretty damn amusing, I guess. Here is the final video of the Walt Disney Masterpiece Collection. 
hopefully not mine. This is The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. A package feature featuring the shorts of The Wind in the Willows and The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. couple of pretty damn good shorts, if I do say so myself. They don't really follow 100% the extent of the plot, but, I mean, what'd you expect? These were, well, the Sleepy Hollow wasn't really that long, and uh, The Wind in the Willows is has a lot of nonsense in it, at least from what I remember reading of it when I was a kid, uh, 19... April 12th, 1999. That's my friend Scott's birthday. <coughs> but he wasn't born in 1999. I actually find this movie to be... I think this is the best of the package projects. I know I haven't done a package projects uh, post on the film review site, but... Um, yeah, I think this is one of the more sound ones. Like, And unlike something like Fun and Fancy Free, it actually ties together to an extent I mean the uh, they're pretty much comparing like who's the best character of British literature which would be Mr. Toad and who's the best of American and that would be Ichabod Crane uh, it's got Basil Rathbone who is best known as Sherlock Holmes narrates uh, Wind in the Willows and Bing Crosby actually <coughs> sorry actually narrates uh, Legend of Sleepy Hollow and does Ichabod's voice and actually all the voices of everyone except the female people in the village I mean he's Ichabod he's Brom Bones he's, he does a lot of things I mean and for a kid who didn't know much about Bing Crosby it was it's still pretty enlightening uh, it's a good film pretty good animation the antics are pretty wild and it's a and it's one of the better package projects, really. It's one of the ones that actually makes one want to watch the package projects. But this was the last Walt Disney Masterpiece Collection video for a while. Um, if I get a couple more, I'll show them to you. I'm still missing The Rescuers, Melody Time, Pete's Dragon, and I think one or two others. But I'll get to them when I get to them. And as always, this is now Nintendo Man 64. And next collection should be the Walt Disney sing-along, or the Disney sing-alongs, because they weren't made until after Walt Disney died. So, see ya!